Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lark Loot Crate here on Pastiche of Skin. Thank you very much for coming back. Thank you very much for watching. We are on our end run of these, of course, but there's still a few to be seen, as you can see. Today we have Loot Gaming to actually take a look at. Uh, so let's just jump into the grid and take a seat. It doesn't seem to be that big of a box this time. Um, I, oh, as soon as I see these cube boxes, it always makes me think, like, yeah, they didn't... It, it, box size should not mean quality. But, sometimes whenever you see a smaller box, it makes you think. But this one has a reason, I think. Ah, there's a reason why it's a cube. It's a companion cube. You can see that's already designed on the top, but, yeah, so, that makes sense. So let's take a look at the t-shirt on the front, and open it up, and let's see what's on the inside. Alright, so Capcom. Let's see Capcom right in the front. Oh! 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 <laughs> so, let's make sure you can get a good look at this. Check it out, guys. Oh, whoa. Make sure I get lifted up properly. So, Resident Evil Biohazard. So, of course, Resident Evil 7 has come out and has been a fantastic success. It has been a terrifying renewal for the Resident Evil franchise. And it's all due to the fact that it's gone resident with its evil. With the crazy Baker house. So, uh, the t-shirt's really hard to tell on this image. I don't know if you can really see it if I even hold it closer because the focus isn't going to be that great. But the t-shirt actually is of the Baker House. It's the standard logo design that's been going around for the Resident Evil series. So, or Resident Evil 7 uh, front cover. And it has, of course, a creepy, creepy, what it looks to be, a little girl figure uh, at the very bottom, like the creepy shadow outline in front of the Baker House. So, yeah, I'm happy to have a Resident Evil t-shirt. Uh, it's just standard black. You know, <laughs> what can you do? It's a standard black with a decent print on the out on the front of it. The edges aren't, like, all, it doesn't look like it's actually been, like, cut off at the edges. That's a big problem I have with the, some of the larger prints. Large prints tend to look like they actually just have a line where they stop. And as soon as I say that, I don't know if that's crease in the material or if that is the way the print goes. There's actually kind of, like, almost like a, you can see the square border where it actually stops. Um, making use of a negative space on the edge of a frame like that is probably one of the more important things when it comes to, like, t-shirt printing. It means that you actually have, like, a print that actually stops at a certain point rather than actually being a print that just has, like, wall. <laughs> where knowing exactly where the print stopped. Um, yeah, I can definitely tell. Because it's, it's almost got that polar, a Polaroid kind of edge around it, you know, like the rounded edge. So, almost looks like a bit of a frame. But that's, that's, not, that's not to say it's a bad t-shirt at all. I don't imagine this, um thick print lasting all that long and the t-shirt material is very very thin but uh, it looks pretty nice let's throw this bad boy on ah. and so you can get a good look at it while i'm wearing it here in the video ah decent fit a bit loose in the neck it doesn't feel as like it literally doesn't feel as good as the t-shirt i was wearing underneath it <laughs> it's already you can see it a bit hanging down there at the throat there's actually how low it hangs even on mines so it's a very thin material okay so well, let's take a look to see what else is inside this crate. Oh. All right, so it's actually got like a wee kind of like fold blocker at the top here to stop you from in the bottom. I think I, that's a bit to kind of like finish off your companion cube, probably. So let's reach in and see what else is inside the crate. So what is this? Okay. Uh, more Capcom. Can't beat that. Always uh, happy to see more Capcom stuff. Obviously, uh, Mega Man, because we're... <laughs> the thing that's like in front of the camera. It's um, uh, Mega Man's brother, Proto, on the front of the box. Let's see what's on the inside. The last thing we got with Mega Man was a uh, variant uh, colored themed like character. I think, is there, I have him up on the, this box. No, it's on another shelf that I was shelving you that I actually have him sitting up on. It's, um, it was a red Mega Man. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Interesting. I like that. That's kind of cool. Ooh. So, it's actually the Prudaman helmet? Just on its own? Prudaman. All that remains of his desiccated body. Ah, oh, man. You know, like... Whew. 
I just got the as soon as I see Proto Man or I actually see anything relating to him, it just makes me think of that whistling tune before he entered in the old games because you, I probably played more Mega Man as a child than any other video game series. I mean that pretty much, I spent my I spent my entire childhood years playing Mega Man games. Yeah, probably. I mean, like I play I played I didn't I, actually. In fact, did I play one? I think I started a two, and then played my way through all the original NES series ones, and then uh, finally, whenever I went to SNES, I actually I went away. I stopped playing them after uh, X One came out, until probably like X Six, and then I think a friend of mine's let me play through a bunch of them that he had on. I think at that point they'd moved to PlayStation even, so I don't know. But um, yeah, I like that. I really like that. I really do like uh. I like Proto. Proto's always been one of my favorite characters in the Mega Man Mythos, so it's kind of cool to get that figure. I'm actually happy with that. So what else we got here? Ooh, we got someone from Psychonauts. Okay, um, Psychonauts, if you're not aware of it, uh, is a... It's a... The guys that made Double Fine, or guys that owe Double Fine, since you made Psychonauts, it's a crazy mad platformer that... Oh, this is kind of cool. A crazy mad platformer that takes place inside the minds of a bunch of ill people and you're playing a series of characters or you're playing characters that are trying to make them better you are the psychonauts you travel in and fix their brain problems and what they sent us in the loot crate is pretty badass actually i'm going to need to stretch this out a wee bit because obviously my head is not going to be standard fitting <laughs> from the first looks at like i look at that and go like <laughs> you think my head's going to fit in that <laughs> oh cute Right, there we go. That's like kind of fixed over on one side. Um, take you all the way down there. I'm gonna take you. Make that fit. Right, so what they got us is a pair of steampunk goggles. Oh man, I actually love how red these are. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, everything's actually in like a... Do you know how many people say a rose-tinted world? This is actually pretty badass. I mean, obviously, I have I own like three pairs of these kind of goggles already. They're um plastic. Even plastic framed. So the ones that I've actually had before are actually like this same kind of like plastic body and rim. But I've actually had ones that have glass and a bit of temper in them to do the coloring. These are actually just colored plastic lenses. So they, they'll scratch and stuff and probably wear off. I mean, do they actually have a bulbousness to them? Uh, these ones are kind of like kind of in, so they're they're co costume glasses. But um, I like the brushed look on them and the rotted look on them because I tend to steampunk it up every once in a while. <sighs> I don't know. I'm gonna try and do the rest of this video in red because everything looks pretty damn cool like this. In fact, if I could get glasses that had this tint, I would would wear it. Ah, uh, the mad scientist lives again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Proto Man. I'll reprogram you and send you off after your brother. <laughs> okay, let's go and take a look inside the crate here. <laughs> I think I'm slowly going insane just by wearing these. Okay, so, um, oh, cool. Look, gaming clothing item. Again, uh, it's not something that I would wear that often. You may notice that I'm more of a casual wear gentleman. But, uh, yeah. The damn fine tie. Now, the design of this one is Portal. So you can actually see on the design of the boxes. Ooh, 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 to make sure that you don't hit things. So it has a series of portal warning symbols on the outside of the box. And on the actual box itself is the companion, or on the actual tie itself is a companion cube. Let's see here. Let's see how well I can remember my wins or not. Yes. This is actually a very wear heavy. <laughs> like this could be you know, a loot wearables box. With the uh, goggles and this, but I mean, essentially, loot wearables being seem to be for real life practical wear. These suit ties, like if I was actually back in an office job, I'd be wearing these nonstop. So I've actually received a Dangan Rupa one from the loot anime. I have received a Kingdom Hearts one, I think, from a loot one previously. Was it Kingdom Hearts? Um, I've also received a Pac Man one, I think, at one point. So yeah, I've actually received a number of ties. I could have actually been working it, rocking it into business meetings with my beard and my gaming fascinations all expressed at once. That is a 
<laughs> so let's take a longer look inside the box here. All right, there can't be that much left because it can barely reach in the bottom. Oh, of course. You know, uh, uh, that song's going to upset me a little bit, but I'll talk about that in a wee second. And our last item of the day is Mad Science, January 2017. <laughs> I feel mad. Yes, uh, the pin being a brain with tuning forks essentially stuck into it. And, of course, a sign of crazy, mad experiments. So, yeah. Last thing we only have left to do is the poster. Now, uh, don't like posters being folded into squares in the first place. Particularly don't like it whenever this becomes the standard way to fold them in and put them in and fit them in the box. Guys, fold them one more time instead of bending them. You know, it's kind of... You, you know what size your box is going to be. You know the kind of stuff that's going to be sitting on top of it. Why would you then send me a bent fucking poster, which is almost guaranteed whenever I unfold it to actually uh, fold over on itself and tear at one of the folds. It's kind of like a standard rule of thumb of what happens if a poster has been folded in this particular way. So, what is our poster this time? Ooh, I like this one. I actually do really like the art in this poster. Check that out. Do love me a mad scientist? Like that one. Like it a lot. So let's take a look at the back as we do see. Uh, mad Science. Through the genius of science, you can affect the world for great good or great evil. That's a risk you take when they experiment with Mad Science. We created this crate with exclusive loot from Resident Evil, Portal, Mega Man, and Psychonauts. So yeah, Mega Man, Proto Man helmet. Um, yes, Proto Man's damn awesome. We featured the Mega Man version of this helmet in Loot Crate's 2014 Battle Crate. Oh! So if you had gotten the battle crate from two years ago, this is actually the companion piece to it. Very smart. Two years. Two. Three, well, January 2017. Three years. Like almost to do. That's well, that's a long wait to actually go for like three years to wait for the actual second half of a crate. I'm going to have to put these up because they're <laughs> the way I've been standing there talking. It's actually like it's rubbing right into that bit of my eyeball and it's starting to hurt like a motherfucker. This is the way. This is the way the actual character in like not actually wears them anyway. Puts them on his head. I'm gonna have two red dimples right here in the middle of my forehead from doing this. Uh, a portal companion cube necktie, a Resident Evil Seven T-shirt. Oh, oh. The Mad Science coin pin, Psychonauts goggles. Psychonauts was the debut title for Double Fine. Did I say Double Fine or did I fight Fine Time earlier on? No, Double Fine Productions. Raz, a young boy with psychic abilities, a unique platformer Psychonauts has become a cult hit. Upcoming VR release of, yes, there was actually a VR sort, sort of sequel, which is Psychonauts, The Rhombus of Ruin. Um, obviously, we would love to try it here on the channel, but uh, until the financials explain why we can buy that kind of gear, we won't be doing VR content. Even though we're, even though we're set up for AR, like AR VR, we've actually set the studio up so that you can set a camera down and see behind me what would be happening in the game while I'm playing the game, then also see the game content like you would normally see on the screen because we're using a green screen. You can do that. I have that set up. The setup is easier to do than the actual getting the hands on the hardware to do. So, uh, ba -ba the epic drop was the Aperture Science Epic Drop. Uh, power of coordinated technology is at your fingertips. Two lucky winners will get a portal gun, and one lucky winner will receive a HTC Vive. That kind of... You know, that's what I'm just after saying. It could kind of be useful, maybe. I'm never, I'm never getting a mega crit now, but back then, whenever I started off, I wasn't getting ones either. But a portal gun would have been kind of cool. Portal gun prop. I'm, I'm still hoping that the, somebody will actually like take the portal gun prop and modify some like VR controllers or actual gun controllers so that you can use it as a light gun. Would be fantastic. I haven't seen anybody do that yet. But the prop looks pretty damn badass. And room scale VR. Like the, the we, this room is actually set up. Like I said, room scale. I could actually do room scale in this room if I got the HTC Vive. So eh, if people want to, if you wanted to see VR content or even come to test out VR content in the north of Ireland, I would happily set up an arcade area for it. But obviously, I do not have the capability to do so because it costs money. Money. Money is the reason why many people can't do things. We can't do things because of money. So yeah. That is a light crit. It's a very light crit. A um, lot of wearables. A lot of things to wear. Uh, so literally... Am I? Yeah. Uh, if I, <laughs> if you think, 
Like, here's it. This is all the contents in the crate. In shot. So, I mean, these are cool. Uh, although, I know exactly how much these cost. I bought do half a dozen pairs in my life already. And these ones even actually have plastic lenses. Not even glass lenses on the inside of them. And they they are comfortable, yet a little bit uncomfortable. You don't spend any... You wouldn't spend any more than eight bucks on one of these. Um, cool to see that the... I, I'm happy I got this. Um, I missed out on the obvious, like, the 2014 figure. So, I don't have the, the matching other for this. But I'm happy with Protoman. This is the dude I love. Uh, portal tie. Don't go to offices, but looks nice. I think I look good in it. And of course, our good and evil t-shirt. So, yeah. As long as there was no goddamn socks, I'm actually not too bad. I'm not going to rage about it. So, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, this has been another loot gaming crate here for Pastiche of Skin. Obviously, this one was January, and I want to get around to it now. So, be, if there is going to be crate videos, though, they're not going to be exactly fast fast releasing unless i actually like get around to it of uh, amongst other stuff that i have to be doing um so thank you very much for watching guys and remember because mad science will always win damn you heroes and i will see all you in the next video bye bye <laughs> later dudes